What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Submission Fishing Live podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. We've got a good show for you guys today. We got Kevin Nakata joining us again. We're going to talk some fishing. We're going to talk the PCS show. Uh, do a little recap of that. Everybody we met, everything you know, we saw everybody. It was really cool. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything to add to that, it should be good. Uh, yeah, we'll bring him on here in a few minutes. We just got a couple of announcements um, and things going on in the fishing world. Just um, some tournaments and stuff. You know, Spotty Bowl obviously is still going on. So what's going on, guys, on Instagram? If you want to come find us on YouTube, that's where we'll be with the show. We got Kevin Nakata coming on with us. Um, but yeah, you know, just the usual stuff. We've got um, lots of um, like uh, sponsored trips coming up, you know, that I'm doing. We've got. Uh, one for BD Outdoors. They're doing actually like a spotted bay bass tournament, uh, kind of like their first annual thing. So they reached out to me for some sponsorships. We'll be sponsoring that uh, later on down the road. We'll be having more details, you know, about that for sure. So you can't have too many spotting tournaments. Uh, should be interesting. Their events are usually pretty good. They give away quite a bit of swag and stuff. So um, <clears throat> should be really cool and something to look forward to. And then, um, you know, some of the other events we got going on but i guess we'll we'll talk about that when we, we bring kevin on here benji tom cotton marino Oos, welcome to the show danny perez Oos, glad you could join us john and sd good seeing you guys in um pcs man yeah that was a lot of fun without further ado what's going on guys on instagram we're going to be on uh youtube if you want to join us check us out let's go ahead and bring on the star of the show kevin nakata <laughs> what's going on man what up? How you been? Oh man, we got you our voice covered. <laughs> that was great, 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 uh, great PCS show for sure. What time did you get in, or what time did you fly back? So you're back in Florida, right? I flew back on uh, Tuesday, so today's Thursday. I had uh, basically a day to recoup yesterday, and then um, yeah, I was all feet running right now, and. Um, yeah, I already miss it. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like a, a big party every year, man. It's like it just gets bigger and bigger and things change and things get added. And we had a, there was a guy rapping this year. I don't know if you saw that. I heard about it. Somebody had mentioned it. Uh, my buddy Travis came by. I was like, yeah, there was like somebody doing like fish wraps, at like one of the halls or something like that. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. Dimension. Yeah, that was cool with two eyes, dimension and the D I I M I R M E N S I O N. He's on Instagram. He's cool, man. That's He's got, cool. he actually literally um, raps like with fish techniques and stuff. It's hilarious. Gotta do a slow pitch jigging one. That'd be hilarious. You there? Yeah, it's whatever. They should have a wolf gang up there. Oh yeah, Wolfgang should be up there. Definitely. If gangs listen to this, it's his time to shine. Right? He's got some sick rhymes, dude. <laughs> yeah. He's busting out. Yeah, I think like it's just changed that there's a 44 foot Freeman there. The thing was like almost as wide as the the hanger opening. Like it was crazy. Did you get to see that? Did you get to walk? Oh, is that, that the one at the like right in the opening yeah it was the biggest dang boat there 44 foot freeman yeah it's crazy i didn't get to go in it but i did check it out um you know it was what was it 40 46 feet or something like that i thought it was 44 maybe 46 give him give him yeah. two inches i'm sure two feet um yeah it was, it was 1.8 million dollars that was it oh really was that what it was yeah 1.8 mil can you believe that that was crazy. I was kind of trying to guess like what the um what the cost was on something like that, but I was guessing I was thinking like one mil, one point three, wow, one point eight. Yeah, it was I think it was one point eight, I'm pretty sure. Um, but dude, it was so big. I didn't get to go on it, but one man can dream one day, you know. <laughs> yeah, I saw lots of kids playing on it and stuff like that. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great show. They really did a great job with this one. They just, uh, there's a lot of young people coming, you know, a lot of young guys come into the show and like meeting up with their, you know, favorite brands and learning about them and meeting people. And 
um, great discounts, like holy smokes, free braid was pretty crazy. Never, I've never seen that before. I think by day three, uh, how many miles were were wound up? Almost a hundred yeah. miles, I think they said, for a uh, hundred miles of braid on the first three days. So that's crazy, man. Like, I, I've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> First time yeah, ever. I would have thought it'd been been more. I mean, that's man, that's a ton of braid. That's like no joke. Yeah, but how you know what does that accomplish? Not sure, but it was definitely an interesting promotion. You know, very interesting. Yeah. Um, Did you get a reel? No. No, no, no. I was selling reels. That's where I was selling reels and jigs in the corner in Tackle Express. Cool. The Were you guys time. sending them over to um, send them over to the Berkeley? Oh yeah, yeah. Once we we sold reels, and we sent them over and did you know did the the reel or the the line thing and it was a great promotion. You know, like for them, for guys who were there to who knew about it, like what yeah. what better way to get fifty dollars a free line than just get fifty dollars a free line? Yeah. You could buy a fifty dollar reel there. And if it took 500 yards of braid, you could fill it all up and literally gain the value of the back and braid. So crazy. 100%. What's going on, guys, on Instagram? We're on YouTube if you want to join us. I'll be signing off here pretty quick, but just wanted to let you guys know what we were doing. Yo, 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 what's up? What's going on, Driftwood Fishing? Just doing a show with Kevin if you guys want to see us on YouTube. Utah Tuna, yeah, dude, great seeing you. You and the boy, man, that was awesome. Thanks for stopping by. It was really good stuff. Yeah, man, that like, um, let's see who else we got in the house. Captain Dan. Oh, yeah, before I forget, you guys, Captain Dan is doing a, um, so CCA is having an event. And um, it looks like the, he could probably give you guys some more information. On May 18th at Mission Bay, they're doing a big award uh, presented to Captain Frank Lepreste. Is that how you say his name with the Royal Polaris? Yeah, um, wow. Captain Dan's going to be there. Uh, he said he's making two or pizzas. He's even going to, he said he's going to lower himself and make some pineapple pizzas. He's going to stoop to that level. Sushi, brisket, sliders, stuff like that. And um, the MMFC guys are going to have a table. And I think the MMFC table, it's like $100 per person. That includes your, um, you get a CCA membership or a renewal if you don't have one. And then I think a regular table is um, $75. So if you guys go to the MMFC table, um, I am giving some stuff away for that. So that's another promotion I'm doing. You know, I like to sponsor a lot of stuff for these guys and um, CCA too. So if you go sit at this table, there's going to be goodies, grab bags, stuff like that. Um, you know, and the CCA stuff is for a good cause. Obviously, you guys know I talk about it all the time. Uh, got the Don't Tread on English shirts. You know, we need people fighting, especially in California. I mean, I can't think of any other state that benefits more from the CCA than probably California does. So if you yeah. guys aren't a member already, if you like fishing, uh, if you want to see the conservation, you know, over our waters and stuff like that, definitely go support those guys. Uh, May 18th at Mission Bay, contact Captain Dan. He's in the chat here if you guys want more information and uh, ask him about the MMFC table for sure. Go get on him. For sure. Thank you, Captain Dan. Yes, Captain Dan mm -hmm. is an uh, invaluable asset to the community. Holy yeah. smokes. He's the, if you haven't had his pizza, like you guys are missing out. This guy brings ovens. He's got the homemade dough. I mean, his ham and pineapple pizza is the absolute best. It's just it's good stuff. He will be very busy. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So go check that out. And uh, always thank you guys for PCA for you know doing that sort of stuff and out there fighting for fishing rights. Yeah, they do a great job. Heck yeah. Doc Stalker, what's going on, man? Oos. Man, I didn't get to talk to you much at PCS. I know you stopped by, you know, said what's up at the booth, but I was caught up with a lot of people. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, man. Lalo Fish, what's going on? Big Water Outdoors. Glad you could join us. Good to see you. Thank you again. You also stopped by, got a shirt. Dude, that was awesome. Really appreciate that. Captain Dan says he bought another pizza oven. Wow. Oh my gosh. Cranking them out. That's serious, man. Him and George are three, cranking them out, man. Three, three pizza ovens. <laughs> That's awesome. What's going on, guys, on Instagram? We're on uh, YouTube if you want to come join us. I just talking with Kevin Nakata. Yeah, so I mean, PCS was good. I flew out there. Um, 
Tuesday, you know, I spent the night Tuesday. How do you guys know? I, I flew in from uh, Florida, uh, just crashed out, had a little mishap with the bookings. Hey, there's always something that goes wrong. We definitely had our um, the good, the bad, and the ugly for sure. <laughs> but we get there, and so PCS is in Orange County, right? I live in Florida. I used to live in San Diego, and for whatever reason, like I get into, I had a layover in Texas, and I look at my tickets, and I was flying into, I flew into San, I was flying into San Diego. So I intended to fly into like John Wayne airport or somewhere in orange County. Right. But I get into Texas and realize that my next stop is in San Diego. So my sister was staying here and she had booked the tickets and somehow she missed the memo about going to orange County. So then my wife had to scramble and then she had to get us a rental car. So then I land late on Tuesday. Then I had to drive. 88 miles north to my hotel up in Orange County. Oh yeah. It's a rental car, man. And that was already just like day one. Like what a what an adventure, man. Just Crazy. a normal day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was just gonna like Uber kind of back and forth or have you pick me up, you know what I'm saying? But next time. Yeah. yeah. Next time. And then the last day. Of course, I had to get up early and then drive down again, 88 miles from Orange County down to the San Diego airport because I was leaving from there, too. So it's like then I had to boogie down. Then we had daylight savings the night before and then man had to get up like super early and drive down. So the travel was definitely an adventure for sure. But no problem. Definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. It was probably the best consumer fishing show aside from Bassmaster. Bassmaster is just phenomenal. Top notch every time. Um, this one was just like fun. There yeah. wasn't very much. Everyone there is, you know, they're like as part of a community. There's a lot of people that are familiar with each other and brands that align and, and do things together. And um, man, it was just like people were there with a lot of excitement behind what they're doing and they want to do more and um you know it's it grows every year i think there yeah. was more vendors than there was last year you know yeah i think there was they they, have, they squeezed them in for sure it said there was like a record attendance right more i guess more people came this year than last year i i believe it yeah it was it's gonna get bigger and bigger too like they're not slowing down you know so yeah. i just want to know if they're going to choose a better venue at some point or bigger venue you know I mean, that venue, it's, I feel like it's pretty good. It got crowded, but it didn't get like too crazy. You know what I mean? I feel like Thursday was the, was busy. Friday was fairly busy. Saturday was crazy. I mean, Saturday was nuts, but then Sunday was like, Sunday was pretty mild. Yeah. Um, the different halls is really cool. You know, that, that, that yeah. place that we're at Orange County fairgrounds is like neat. Cause there's different places, like five different buildings and then yeah, two yeah, yeah. pavilions in between and, and then the giant one, but like very, it's a very interesting walk. And I actually, I think I mentioned it a couple of times. It's like a two day show for a, a consumer who's really there to look at things. You you would have to speed run it to just basically get what you want and you're good. Like you have to literally probably take a, a shopping list with you and write down booth numbers to find yeah. out what you want. Cause otherwise you're just, you have no chance. You're not gonna be able to get it all done in one day. There's no way. Yeah. So. I was seeing like, I mean, there's a lot of people going multiple days. I mean, I saw some of the same faces, like two, three, four of the days. They were there like all the time. Um, yeah. It was, it was pretty wild. Yeah. All right, guys, on Instagram, I'm going to sign off. But um, if you want to come find us, find us on YouTube. We'll be chatting out there. And I uh, just want to let you guys know we were uh, going live. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully, we'll uh, see you over here on YouTube. Oops. In that video, yeah, it, it was crazy. It was just like um, seeing all the people there, you know, multiple days. I was in the Tackle Express booth, booth and I was watching um, your jigs. I literally have never seen so many people on a little sliver. You know, it was a pretty good sliver. It wasn't little, but like a whole sliver, a whole section of wall. People just standing there and going like this. Like just <laughs> taking whatever they could find because I'm serious. It was drying up the last day was like no more 10 15s for sure 
And then there was like tons of 20 grams picked through for Sumo and Assassin. 40s, actually 40s, 40 Assassins and 60 Assassins, even 60 Sumos were also really, those went fast. And I haven't seen that, those go that fast before. Yeah. They went fast. And then you had like the 200 gram Ogres were really popular with new ones. The Squishy was definitely a fan favorite. That was a fan favorite. Um, I thought the yeah. mackerel was going to be a better, better seller, but the 200 gram squishies was fire, and the 600 grams like were really going out too. So, really impressive to see how much this has changed. You know, like people know what they want. They've spent the time fishing the product now. So, yeah. Sorry, we're trying to figure out how to turn one of the other lights on over here. Yeah, the um, the 50. I mean, the the 40 and the 60 have really like they've gotten a lot of traction. I mean, maybe just because we've been fishing them so much, but um. You know, there's, I think as people are expanding too, you know, everybody kind of starts with the small stuff and the dock stuff and they're acquainted with spotties, but then as they're getting out into the kelp and the deeper waters or even, even the bait barges and stuff like that. I mean, once you're over 50 feet, I mean, that's where those jigs really shine. And I think people are really starting to find out you can catch calicos and even different pelagics and bonito yellowtail and rockfish on them. You know, even the big sand bass will smoke those. That's like that perfect size for those giants that are out there right now. The only so thing, a lot of traction. The only thing we had missing from that wall was 80 grams. I bet you the 80 grams would have just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they would have been next next to the best, the the biggest, um, hottest thing on that wall for sure. Yeah. Doc Stalker says, yeah, you were busy, brother. <laughs> Didn't want to interrupt. No, at least you stopped by, dude. I'm glad about that. MPA expansion talk today. Are they trying to expand the MPs? I guess they always are, huh? MJ said, met Kevin last year, waiting in line last year at the PCS. I want that video. Oh, video from, on, uh, yeah, yeah, from the uh, front line. Probably coming in. Driftwood Fishing, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Iron Fish, yeah, man, good seeing you too. Benji, so then you got to make it down next year, man. I missed you. What's Great up meeting with you the MPA expansion? I'm going to look that up. My first time there. Yeah, dude. Thanks for stopping by. That was totally awesome. Glad you enjoyed it. Move it down to Del Mar. Yeah, I guess they could do two shows. That might be even a, a thing. Instead of doing a bigger show, maybe splitting it into two shows. No. No? No. You're not feeling it? No. Just one's good. <laughs> one's plenty. <laughs> yeah, we're good with one. Oh wow, they are. They they look like they might be doing that, huh? Interesting. I'll have to look into this. I haven't heard this yet. That is a very dangerous show. I mean, about fifteen minutes in, spent way more money than I should have. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes, man. Wait, this yeah. expansion is just thirty by thirty. This is not. Yeah. This is not new news. The thirty by thirty we've been dealing with for a long time. You know. Yeah. Brian likes to fish. Shout out to Brian, the spotty champion, man. He came out two days and uh, hung out with me at the booth, man. Talk spotty. So if you guys got to come to the booth, I mean, that's one of the benefits, you know, having some of these guys. I mean, he was out there talking to a lot of young kids. Someone has, you know, catch spotties, even older people, anybody that had questions. Uh, he was more than happy to give them information and techniques. He brought his rods and reels. So that, that was really cool. Which I need to bring a 50-foot semi-trailer next year. Yeah, so I don't... I don't ever like bring the the product. Well, I've only gone two times, but both times I haven't. So our deal is I usually try to fill a couple select dealers and then they sell our stuff and we direct them that way, which is kind of nice because it saves me from having, especially now living out of state, you know, instead of having to fly a bunch of product or somehow get it out there. It's, I they just make orders kind of a month or two before I ship it out. Uh, then they bring it down and set it up and then we kind of send them their way. Which is nice. And then if they sell out, they'll just make a reorder once they got no stuff. So that's kind of roundabout how I make the money, you know. It's been a, it's been a good couple of years. Taco yeah. Express has really taken care of you. So yeah. and they sell. Yeah. Yeah, Taco Express has been really good to us. Driftwood says, I have that sheephead trip and possibly find some yellow tail March 23rd. If anyone wants to join leave it on shelter Island. Yeah. Check that out. I reposted that guy's little group trip. They're putting on. Yeah. The 80 gram was, I should have probably brought some of those. I can't believe they didn't have them. I was yeah. so bummed. I was like, I, I thought they did, but I guess not. 
we will have we'll have a talking chat and i they'll they'll sell the the macro one really fast that rainbow rolls probably equally sells it just as fast so yeah i need to make that in a squishy squishy seems to be like that's the fan favorite dude everybody Man. loves that everybody loves that color it was so, so fast good. like yeah. it went crazy it was it was the deepest of the 200s and the thing went like that so what if that's it, a west coast thing because there's like there's no squid on the east coast you know what i'm saying i, I, I don't think people uh, you know basic I don't, I don't think people like buy it because they think it looks exactly like a squid i think they like exactly the color. but it's kind of got that same that's what we base it off of right it's got the red head the pink and like some glow dots on it but i think it's it's associative right like people see something like they know it's not like the real thing but it's kind of that squid color ish or maybe it just looks cool i i think people buy it because they know it, it's uh it's different like yeah. how many jigs do you see on the wall that have that like it's not yeah. common that's so, true it's a very unique color i like it a lot i think the mackerel though is just that much it's just that much more pretty brian said spotty anglers were buying bags full of 10s and 15s yeah dude even a uh, tackle supply, I started sending them there once Tackle Express was out, and then they were out too. Um, they had I I went jigs hanging. Yeah, at the end. I went back there Sunday, and there was there was nothing. There was just like nothing else left on the shelves. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. But I mean, just I think getting to talk to everybody is, it was, yeah. You, know, you see all these people. Like half the time, a lot of people were coming up and talking to me and i didn't know who they were and then they tell me their screen name you know and i'm like oh okay yeah 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 you're in the chat so i got to connect a lot of faces for people that i see in here or people that watch youtube videos or on instagram and you don't really know them then they tell me their screen name and then I instantly i recognize them you know from uh, being in the chats and the interactions and stuff so that's always cool when they come by lots of young anglers too i think that's what's really important too i, I really like seeing that you know that's the health of the fishery if it's just all old people it's just going to die, you know, and you need the young blood. And it was a lot of young people too. So that was, that was really cool. A lot. It, it was definitely a totally different show. Way more kids, way more people under 15 who knew what yeah. they wanted. You know, they yeah. weren't just like asking. They were like, oh, I know what I want. And yeah, they like, were there. Okay. There for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And it's really neat to see that. I mean, it, it definitely is growing, which is nice to see. California has probably been more stagnant than anything with fishing growth. And it was just like there was probably more teenagers running around than there was adults, to be honest with you, at one point. So, yeah. Yeah, I, good. I would agree with that. It was really good. Sammy, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. You guys check out the show from two weeks ago. Sammy came on, talked about spotty fishing. Great uh, show. Championship win. So if you guys yeah. want to check that out. Sammy came. Sammy was there, yeah, a couple days. So he was out there, too, hanging out. I mean, it was good stuff. So did you get anything at the show? Um, I got a bunch of ops and leader. Um, so did you. And oh, yeah, uh, he, he did I didn't need to use that stuff. I learned a lot. I, uh, I I talked to Greg Brown, who's the owner for a long time, and his, um, and his uh, partner, Alan. And, um, yeah, I just learned a lot about that that company. I learned a lot about their processing and their manufacturing. And I um like it's very hard to find high quality fluorocarbon anymore. Blackwater yeah. used to be kind of like primo primo, um, but they had a slow extrusion style of um manufacturing. And so this is actually even better. Um it's a really slow extrusion pure very minimal amount of defects if any and that basically allows for you to have higher breaking strength use you can use lower um pound test what's the slow extrusion just like kind of how it comes out of the die and like a slower press or something like that yeah so if you it what happens if you do it fast it has imperfections it has waviness to it like it's thin uh, and big and thinning big or like brittle has cuts in it sometimes and like right. it's not always consistent and so it's like to that level, like maybe people don't actually notice that when they're using it, but if you slow it down, it creates a pure product. It's more consistent. It's not, it's just one, you know, thin or uh, diameter throughout the whole thing. And so it makes for in theory a, uh, and actually does a much tougher product. The other thing it does, I was messing around with it. 
I was squeezing it really hard and pinching it to where it was like it would normally like leave a dent in line right or like a like a bump and it would actually rebound pretty nicely and that's not something i see very often in the in the last thing was the knot strength was like wow we tied a uni to uni and we were trying to break 20 to 25 pound and we couldn't break it not even with our hands like we uni unis break pretty easy and this was not breaking so we need this muto for when we're fishing wrecks like this is the perfect leader to be able to put on like 50 pound which we're using 100 or 80 pound right now we could probably get away with 50 so yeah I, he gave I, me he gave me 100 pound the, oh yeah, yeah <laughs> often they, he gave me a roll of 100 a roll of 50 and like a couple 60 pound rolls so we'll yeah. try it out it'll be interesting to see you know i've always been a mono guy well that's not true i was like a floral guy and then i figured do i even need floral so then i just switched to mono so you know he gave me a couple rolls so i'll use it i mean obviously i'm not gonna just like we have to I try it. product somebody gave me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know I'm saying I'm opposed to, to fluoro. I just wasn't sure if there was a need for it. So I'm curious to see. We'll put it to the test, you know. See if it's superior or if we get more bites, you know. We'll we'll put it, definitely put it to work for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. We have to get back out there and fish, actually. The weather was perfect the last two days. Yeah, it was. And then it's crap again to like next week oh man really yeah i was checking it out saturday sunday's pretty blown out uh probably i think like wednesday thursday is pretty good next week but mm. that tuesday or the monday or the wednesday or somebody was was it yesterday was like perfect it was flat yeah. beautiful beautiful day yesterday. Wing, but yeah and i was like man i just can't make it out i thought about going out i'm like there's just too much to do do, do you have any news yeah. to share about um what's happening in the future have you locked that down yet Oh, yeah. So we're getting, you know, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we, we can talk about it. Yeah. So what Kevin's talking about is, so also at, um, so PCS, and I know a lot of you guys were, um, we talked about like the submission at sea and stuff like that. And uh, we have secured a boat. We locked one up. We're going to be on the Voyager. So we're still working out pricing and stuff like that. And we're going to be in October. We're going to leave October 23rd that night. And then we're going to go, uh, we're going to, fish the 24th and then we'll come back to the 25th so we'll probably fish the night of the 23rd that's usually what happens you leave at night you'll fish for bluefin the 23rd and then we're going to fish for big rock fish um probably the 24th and then 24th night we'll fish for bluefin again fish a little bit during the day the 25th and we'll come back late on the 25th so it's a two-day trip uh, you guys wanted the submission at sea so there's only um i think 15 spots available um, 17 total on the boat. So me and Kevin already eaten up two spots. So it's a smaller, <laughs> um, kind of a smaller trip. There's only 15 spots, but I know it's like, um, you know, one of those trips would be a little bit pricey. It'll probably be somewhere in like the $800 range, probably like around 850 or so, you know, we're trying to kind of figure it out, see what the cost of the meals are and everything like that. Meals are included. Um, you know, everything's included and, um, should be good. And our plan is to go out to the, um, 60 mile. Right. I haven't, I've never fished out there. Kevin has. And man, we were looking at it on the maps. It is, it looks pretty wacky. It is, it is the craziest rockfish zone there is right now, for sure, that, that we have access to. It's just um, an incredible unfished. It was untapped. It, it's got fish last year. Um, there it is. Yeah. So you and, guys can uh, see just in relations. So it's in between kind of, the Cortez Bank and San Clemente. Yeah. So it's right on the border. This is Mexico right here. And it's just on the US Mexico border. But what's fascinating, what you guys can see here and what we're talking about is you see all the surrounding area where it's like four thousand feet, five thousand feet. But then look at this point, it comes up to three hundred feet, three hundred twenty five feet, and then all these layers around it. Look yeah. at this six hundred, five eighty. It's on. Un, it's unreal. Eight ninety nine. I mean, these zones are just going to be. That's going to be insane, dude. The other thing like, about it wild. is, is you're not too far from Tanner and Cortez, which, you know, for the most part, October is where the big bluefin were at night. Yeah. So we could probably bounce out there. I would even say maybe the beginning of the trip, you go out there and yeah, at the then end, come you back. come down to sixty because you get a night and a half. To basically fish up there and then come down the last day and blow up the rockfish. Yeah. So 
That'd be but smart. I think that's probably the best bet. You won't even need to worry about rockfish. Like no one, if you put down a 600 gram jig, you have nothing to worry about catching fish. Like it yeah. is so good. What you guys got to understand when we say rockfish, we're not talking like these dinky ass little 12 inch reds and stuff that you're getting at the islands. I mean, these are behemoths. Like you, you guys seen those videos of me and Kevin post. I mean, th these are fish like that. Like they're real deal, huge, big ass fish. They're big um, reds, very big. And ling cod and big boccaccios. Not many people are a big fan of the boccaccios. I have no problem with them. Um, but well, like they don't have you're... the worm. I mean, sometimes they're wormy, but you can just toss them back. But it, when if they're not, I mean, I eat them. I don't. I don't really care. The um, God, I think last year there was like a twenty pounder on our boat landed. A, a giant. I mean, the thing was pounder, like yeah. it was huge, dude. It was giant. Um. There was huge reds. Like reds were pretty common there. I was, I was liking what I got. I, I think I got my limit for sure. And then I helped someone else out. I was using 600 gram on 20 pound test braid in the normal deal that we do out there and had a great time. So. Yeah. Heck yeah. Place to be. It's a place so to we're going to. Gonna, um, yeah. Definitely keep that on your radar guys. If you want to fish with us, like I said, it's only be 15 spots, the two day trip. And, um, They'll probably release it in like the next week or so. And um, yeah, it should be good. And we're going to do so. I think what we're going to do is open up. They're going to give me the like seating as well. So cool. when you book or put in a deposit, you'll be able to pick your bunk in your spot. Oh, so yeah. that'll kind of be some incentive to get in there sooner. So if you want to lag and get stuck in the bow, <laughs> getting tossed around. Although sometimes they always put the best bunks up there. Which is weird because it's bigger, I think. There's more space, but it's like I sleep yeah. in the bow all the time. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not sure how the big the Voyager is. I think the let me check here really quick. I mean, just based on the people, I don't think it's you know how many it holds. I don't know if it's that big of a boat. Aren't he? What's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Drifting yeah, fishies, it's gonna be awesome, up. He's down for October. Sammy said he's in. I mean, that's two. Oh yeah, here we go. This is it. Uh, so, yeah, it's 55 feet long, boys. Let's go. Yeah. It's a sick awesome. boat, though. That's a pretty good-sized boat. Oh, yeah. No, it's going to be awesome. And, um, like, October is perfect because the conditions are just laying off. You know, it's not nearly as bad all the time and knock on wood. And the tuna could be foaming. They could be down deep. They could be on, you know, they, they, they could be doing anything. Like, yeah, who knows? But for sure, the 60-mile bank's not moving. So. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the good things, too. At least we always have the, that to, you know, there's going to be fish on that for sure. But then oh, yeah. they still were going out far enough with the blue. I mean, the bluefin are pretty much there year-round these days. Cortez, Tanner, like, it seems like they don't leave anymore. So if we push out far enough, I don't think it'd be a problem. But, yeah, it's probably a good plan. Yes. Go hit the tuna first. Maybe go hit Cortez. Go get some giant ass bluefin, and then go to bed, and then wake up on some rockfish grounds. Man, that sounds pretty it, awesome. That place is so, dude. We were fishing. Everyone else was fishing bait. I think there was four of us who were actually dropping down big enough jigs. And I and I had them. You gave me like a bunch. This was on Pete yeah. Gray's trip. You gave me a bunch to hand out. So I gave like. I had 10 or something and not everyone wanted to use them. They're bad call, bad call. So anyways, handed over a few, had them all rigged and drop the people that dropped down the jigs were just absolutely out fishing the bait guys because the bait guys would go down and they would come up empty handed with their bait just pulled right off. Right. And you're not getting, you have doubles down there and you're like, I just dropped down 600 feet and didn't come up with anything, let alone a big one, anything. Yeah. And so, like all of, every single jig drop, it was doubles. Like you just sit down there, you get one fish, you just sit there, you just bounce it, and then you just feel it. Just next one coming, you're just like, oh, two got me a two for every yeah. time. Yeah. And what's funny because it's like, yeah, the jigging is just it's one of those fisheries where it's just like so much superior. It's like with the jigs, you know. It is funny because there's two hooks and like because they fight, they fight over the bait. So when one fish has it, like the other fish thinks that they're like 
eating something or fighting it. So another one comes up and like tries to steal it. And that's how you get the double fish. It's like yep. one is hooked on one end because they bit the head part. And then another fish, they hear the ruckus. Those rockfish starve, man. They eat they like pyrosomes, which are just like sponges. It's not good eating down there for rockfish. So it's like, especially out that far. So they're just voracious, man. They see something come down. They think is a dead fish just floating to the bottom. They, they're just, they're all over it. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah, maybe we'll catch something weird because, like, you know, it's not too far with 1,200 feet, you know, and I think there's crazy enough guys on the boat that when we go, we'll try, you know. There's got to be some crazy stuff along that thing. For so, how deep? I don't care. I'll drop as deep as they want to throw. Yeah. I'll drop 2,000 feet. <laughs> I oh, <don't> man. <laughs> maybe 1,500. Maybe not too I had to make sure. Last year, I think my pen fathom handle fell off in the middle of, like, reeling up from 1,000 feet. And I was just like, it just came off and I was like, oh, damn. And it just, you had to just grab the grease and just pull it up like this. It sucks so bad. So make sure your your screws are down all the way on your handles. Yeah, hell yeah. But I think it'll be good. So mark your calendars, guys. We'll have some more details, you know, as we come up. But um, October, October 23rd, coming back to 25th. What, two and nights? You'll be- You'll have, um, you're going to have, uh, um, some stuff, right. To give away. Yeah. It'll be just like our other trips. You know, we're going to have exclusive, I don't know if we're going to do the shirts this year. We're thinking of doing maybe a hat or something like a, um, like a one-off hat. You know, how we've been doing like the limited edition shirts. So we may do like, um, like a limited edition hat or maybe the shirts. The only thing with the shirts are challenging is we have to like order all the specific sizes and stuff. But yeah, I think if yeah. we did like a hat. You know, with like a, we'll come up with a new logo for it, get a nice like rubber patch, you know, something really nice and then do like some maybe custom hats or something like that. Yeah. Then we have the raffles. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, companies like always give us, you know, giveaway products. I'll be giving away jigs. So you guys don't really need to worry about, you know, having too many jigs. So I'll have some stuff for the night fishing and the rock fish and stuff like that. And and it's not primarily a jig trip. You know, you guys can fish really whatever you want, but. You're going to you want to fish. You jigs, should be fishing bro. a jig. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of catching on jigs. This that yeah. trip. It'll be yeah. perfect. It's, it's kind of actually like during that time, the tuna start to get all like night, night on the night bite too. So April and like October seem April and uh, May. And then um, Oct- September, October, that, that night bite turns on again. And sometimes yeah. it gets stupid out there. If they're out there where we're going to be, hopefully, but, um, I'm yeah, if you guys, really you guys have never caught a bluefin and you want the chaos. I mean, that's the place. Yeah, and it's limited, right? So there's not a, there's not a lot of rods on there. So yeah, it's nice, you know. It's not nearly as chaotic. So, hundred percent. Aaron Carl Black, what's going on, man? Nice seeing you out the show too. Kiwi reacts, what's going on, man? Oos, glad you could join us. Captain Dan said he used to fish out there when I was a kid, and we could use five hooks. Yeah, man, with the Ganyans, just that giant weight. Oh, I've yeah. seen pictures of that. that. That's that's crazy. So, do you think they're? Um, have you heard anything about like opening Calcot or anything this year? Or I've there heard whispers. Reference. I've heard talks about it, but I don't know if it's going to yeah. happen. I think there's still a lot of time here. I mean, we're not even. Well, we're about to be to April, so thank God rock fishing is about to open up. But um, I don't know. I I think that uh, I think it's coming. It's not. It doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. So right. Um, I got, I got to do my research and talk to some people. I haven't, uh, I was so busy at the show. I, I barely even got to catch up with all the CCA guys. I saw Chris and Tony and I, I saw, you know, all my, my friends over there and, um, Darren. And it was just like, I never even really got to, to talk to them and spend some time chatting about what's going on. Um, but I got those guys on a cell call, so I'll call them, but that's, uh, I think they've kind of slowed down a little, not CCA, but like the whole, uh, all of California has kind of seen that anglers have a lot more say than what they used to, what they think. So I haven't seen like too much anti-fishing, like specific propaganda. It's been a little bit laid off. So maybe they realized that they shouldn't have played so, you know, foul when they were trying to do 30 by 30 and bring it in and yeah. bring in uh, this uh, new uh management part of the government in, in the state government like 
thank God we actually said something last year, recorded what was said, you know, because right. a lot of those live streams, a lot of those live videos, they never existed in the past. And so like MLPAs were just running, you know, that when that came through it was not, it came unchecked nearly the community came together, but nothing was really, I think it was on C-SPAN, but nothing was actually like set in stone. So now that there's all this like cameras being recorded, like people have to watch what they say now because if they over promise and they don't deliver, like people are pissed, you know, they should be. Yeah. And we fought that hard, you know, CCA, like they did a lot of work with that, but I mean, I think that's really good that, they're not pushing as hard, right? Because there's much more of a voice. And as CCA grows, it just gets more powerful, you know? Yep. The more people join, the more money it has, the more resources they can get. It's just, I mean, that's why it's so important to become a member is it's just the more members you have, the more you can lobby for these things. If you don't have the money and the funding and the voices, like it just nothing happens. So, like out here in Florida, everyone fishes. And everyone's yeah. part of the CCA, you know, nearly. I mean, there's right. a huge amount of people, Captains for Clean Water, CCA, a lot of different organizations that are pro-conservation or not. Well, they are pro-conservation, but they are pro-fishing, right? And efforts for fishermen. And the amount of people that actually support these organizations is tremendous. And I think there's like 18 million uh, licenses sold every year in Florida over the last two years, um, e each year. So there's a lot of people that are fishing. Imagine how many people are part of the CCA, you know? So they get a lot of the fishing rights, actually, you know, decisions for them because people in the government, whether it's, you know, DeSantis or whoever, they're making decisions because fishing fishermen affect what they're doing. Like as far as, being, you know, making different, uh, not just lobbyists, but in, in the capital, but they're actually making decisions that are good for local fishing. So. Right. Um, right. I don't, the one thing I don't like, and, and he's trying to amend this is uh, the red snapper season. It's a little bit short. It's like two yeah. days on the, the Atlantic coast, um, every year, but like in federal waters, but it'd be great to see another couple of days. At least there's so many freaking red snapper out here. It's insane. So, right. Yeah. I was stopped by the, um, they have the same people out here in Florida, you know, that come by with the clipboards and the Florida fish and wildlife and, they do the surveys. They ask you questions. Same thing. You know, what did you catch? Where did you catch them? It was just like California. Those guys come up and, you know, they ask you questions. And, you know, I was asking them about the snapper season. And, yeah, I know. But I don't know if they're state guys or federal guys. It always gets confusing because it's my understanding, like, in state waters, you know, we were, like, looking up regs, right? It looks like you can just catch snapper and keep them year-round. But state waters is only three miles out. And then it turns into federal water. It's like, well, there's really no snapper within three miles, right? So you can't, it's kind of like a catch 22. You got to go out to the federal waters. And once you're out three miles, it's like, is that, can the state, the state doesn't control that, right? Like that'd, that'd be a federal, yeah, a federal level. Like how does that even get a So they have different to? councils around the country. Um, like the one for that chooses what to do in federal waters for California is the PFMC Pacific fisheries Man management council. I'm sure there's one down the Gulf coast and one in the Atlantic. Um, but they basically come together. The leaders come together, the stakeholders, and they make decisions for, you know, what they're going to do. And it's the councils are, are meant are mixed up with stakeholders from commercial fishing, from recreational, though they're not usually the, the recreational is not usually the big voice. It's, it's usually commercial, um, and and honestly, rightly so, because you know people's li <coughs> livelihoods are on the line. Um, just look at what happened in Alaska. You know that was also, if I'm not mistaken, part of the PFMC's decision to close down King Crab. But um, it can kill like literally industries if you're not watch watching what's going on. So, anyways, I'm pretty sure it's a council. And they are in a lot of different people's, you know, ears and, and they definitely get lobbyists to talk about certain things at the federal level um, to either expand or, you know, uh, contracts places they can fish or, or what time of year. And so they have they have influence on the state level. Just look at what happens with California, though they really shouldn't. The CDFW is basically in you know the ear or the they're listening to what the pfmc has to say about ground fish but that's not necessarily their call at the cdfw right um but they have to literally you know they have to listen to some of these regulations and then say this is what you're going to do so 
Um, it just seems like they defer to it a lot. It's like the states, they let the federal just do their thing. And they're like, yeah, just whatever the states, whatever the federal says, we'll just, they apply it to the state laws. Because you, you, you see them like really similar a lot of times. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I, I would agree that it's pretty similar. <clears throat> but um, I think it's because, you know, when usually when there's a really good fishery, you have a lot more people, stakeholders that come from that zone and they're parked in the council somewhere, right? So usually, not all the time, but there's not, not to say there's not great fishing in Oregon and Washington, especially P talking specifically PFMC and Alaska. Um, but like, you know, California's got a lot of fishermen, probably more recreational than, than commercial, in my opinion. Um, but it's, uh, I think the reason why they kind of focus on commercial is because you know, people's money is tied up in the catching of fish, not necessarily for recreational where it's, it's not nearly like that where someone's going to lose out if they don't catch fish, you know, or if they, yeah, if, if they don't catch fish all year, I think rec guys, it's not going to be a huge deal. Right. Cause they're, they have other jobs they do other stuff. Right. right. Not necessarily you and me, but you know what I'm saying? Um, our money's made with rec guys, but, um, there is something to be said about a commercial guy who can't, who's, if he can't fish, how is he going to, you know, let his kids go to school? How are they going to get fed? And that's kind of a question you have to, you have to ask yourself, you know, and um, it's a big challenge, it's a big challenge trying to mediate all that. Yeah, it definitely is. I know I'd like, it seems like the the commercial guys and the recreational guys have come together. I know we had Wayne Cotto on a couple, maybe last year or a year before, and he was talking about how the commercial guys and the uh, recreational guys used to be at war with each other. And yep. then it, they've kind of united, though, like in the fight, the fight, the state a little bit. But they used to be they didn't always get along. You know, it was recreational guys versus commercial guys. And then the state was in it. But now it seems like commercial and recreation is kind of come together a little more to, to focus on fighting the state, which is good. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's it's kind of like we have to unite at this point, you know, so. Just look at the size of, of California and how many people there are, 30 million. And then and, and then you look at Florida. I wouldn't say there's 30 million people here, but they sell 18 million fishing licenses a year. Obviously, right. people from out of state come or whatever. But like, how come California is not selling 18 million recreational fishing licenses every year? You know, like what's what is this? What's stopping people from doing that? Could be a lot of things, but probably ease of access is one of them. You know, it's incredibly hard for someone in California to continually access waters that are, you know, full of fish and, and, uh, be able to do that without feeling the pressure, like you're yeah. breaking the law. So the problem is, it's yeah, it's like, everything is closed. Like where I used to live up in Carlsbad, it was like, can I fish this lagoon? Can I not fish this lagoon? Like one part of the bridge, like in Del Mar was like a reserve yeah. and you couldn't fish the reserve. Like you could fish to this part, but not under the bridge because then it's, some federally protected land or I'd go to like Batiquitos and Carlsbad was the same thing. You could like walk up to some point, like up to a fence. But then like once you were at the fence, you couldn't fish anymore. It's like you can't fish from any of the bridges. It's just it's it's real restrictive. You know, your, your zone is like so limited about where you can fish. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And like there's not many states that do that, you know, like to literally close water off. It's pretty rare. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you come out here in Florida, it's like you can fish it. People are fishing from like every bridge you go by. Every bridge. We, we, when we go fishing, we just pull over to the side of the road and launch the kayaks in some random stream. Nobody cares. It's like, it's just, it's fine. The, I've the only almost place been I've hit seen. By weights when people cast off the of bridges with my car, yeah. like I've almost hit, had weights go into my passenger side yeah. window. And I think that's just the difference. The only place I've seen closed was over by the military base. Remember, we drove by there. Yeah. It was like yeah. by Mayport, but aside from that, I mean, it's pretty, it's like makes a difference. You know, it's hard when you don't, the regulations, I think make it too difficult. It's like, they do that with a lot of things, you know, they make it so hard and convoluted and so many hoops to jump through that people just don't even deal with. They're just like, well, whatever, I'm just not going to go. <laughs> I'm not well, going to get my license, you know, unfortunately. Honestly, though, I think the regulations in Florida are way stricter as far as what fish you can keep. The and fish. How many yeah, yeah, I I agree with you. Wow. You know, the, not where you can fish or what you can catch, but yeah, like in Florida, like in California, there's just for those of you guys that don't know, it's like 
pretty much with something meets a certain length, you can keep it after that, right? Like all the bass, once they're 14 inches, calico, sand bass, uh, spotty, whatever. If it's 14 inches, it's legal. You can keep it. And out there, you always hear the terminology on the West Coast. We say it's it's legal. It was illegal. And out here on the East Coast, you hear it was a slot fish. Um, and slot is different because out here they have slots. And like for redfish, almost all their fish, there's a certain slot that it has to be. So it can be, okay, it's legal at 14 inches, but only up to 21 inches, then it's illegal again. So there's like, and so many fish have that. They're within that slot. So if you catch a fish that's too big, you got to release it. And if it's too small, you got to release it. Like yeah. You got to be within this small zone. That'd be like catching a calico that has to be between 14 and 16 inches. Yeah. You know, and if it's over 16, you got to release it. If it's under 14, um, and almost every fish in Florida is kind of regulated that way. I think they should do slots in Cali, but like there's so many fish in Florida. It's just crazy keeping up with the regs. Like everyone, yeah. you're just looking at different fish and you're like, is this even legal? I, I don't know what this even is. Like, yeah. what is this? You know? Yeah. I had to buy a booklet because I don't even know. And this is just like, I've just tossed so many fish back because even out, you know, offshore, it's like, because I don't really know the regulations. I don't have yeah, service out there. I can't really check in it. It's like, when in doubt, we just throw them back. You know what I mean? Except for spade fish. If they're legal, they're dead. Those things yeah. taste amazing. Well, if they're legal, I keep them. But my point is, I don't know if they are. So we throw them back. It's like, there's so much doubt. And I don't, I'm not familiar enough with the regulations that I ended up just throwing so much fish back. And then you get back and you're like, oh, I could have kept that thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I'm glad I released it because that thing wasn't quite legal. So, yeah, I love, yeah. love to throw fish back till I get more familiar with it. I really can't wait till we uh, fish Red Snapper. I'm really looking forward to that time. So, yeah, that's going to be awesome. We, we, we catch the crap out of them with slow fish jigs. It's time that we go out there and yeah. let, we're allowed to keep them, you know? It's just one of those fish. It's like the cow cod. It's like there's so many down there. It's uh, it's just overprotected, I think. Oh, yeah. I, think, I wish they would do like a boat limit, like one or two per boat, regardless of anglers. You know what I mean? Like maybe you have 10 people on your boat. We'll give the boat one or something. Yeah, it would instead be nice. Just, huh? Instead of just being like, because it's there's plenty. <laughs> you can't get away from them. You know, it's like when we do rockfish tournaments out in California, I mean, we're doing like pulling up like four cow cod a day, <laughs> you know, yeah. at these, at these tournament days. It's not like they were rare and it's no, nope. and it's a pain in the ass. You got to descend them and then hope they live. And it's just like, it's, it's same thing. same thing with snapper. Every time we go out, we're catching multiple snapper. When we were catching in the shallow stuff, it was like they were everywhere. And the bigger ones are a little more rare, but I think that's just big fish are more rare. But even still, we find them every time I've gone out, I've gotten like a, Either you have or I have gotten a big monster snapper, you know. Oh yeah, crazy. Except for the last time, but we don't know because how many sharks there were. It was pretty bad. Oh yeah, last time we went out with those the guys. Yeah, that's so true. Bad. We didn't get one on. Yeah, sharks. Ever, anyone ever thought the Coronado Islands was tough to fish? Like one wreck out here that's just so bad can ruin your whole like trip out here in Florida. Like there's your every fish you try to reel up will get smashed. So. It's yeah. crazy. We actually remember, I don't think even people understand that it's more expensive in California is a good point. Um, but like people understand how like how big these sharks are. Like we were pulling up 20 pound AJs and we sent one back down with a freaking hook on its back and it got absolutely destroyed and, and we landed that shark. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Like anyways. That's pretty awesome. He said, yeah, the annual license is expensive. Cut the price in half. They probably triple their license revenues. Yeah. I mean, it's the same price in Florida and you, and it's fresh and or it's fresh or salt, not both. So, but I guess that's out of state. So never mind. That's, that's not a, that's not a residential. I think they are more than half actually residentials. It's like 20 bucks or something for salt and fresh out of state was 55. I don't know. I got the lifetime. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Well, last because last year, uh, DeSantis did this program here where he cut the prices in half. So I got a lifetime license, the gold sportsman. So I've got freshwater, saltwater, and hunting, and like all the different tags and stuff like that. And a lifetime deal is 500 bucks, dude. That's, that's pretty, pretty good awesome. price. Yeah, it was really good for everything. That's really yeah. good. Hell yeah. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Corey King, yeah. what's going on, man? Good to see you at the show. 
That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it'd be great to see the prices go down of everything, including licenses. But the, everyone knows where that has to start first, and that has to start with fuel. If free fuel prices don't come down, probably not very much after that. So, yeah, unfortunately. And twenty dollar, uh, twenty dollar um, uh, minimum wage for except for Panera. Everyone except for Panera. Panera's not doing it or what? You didn't hear about this? No. Panera Gate. <laughs> no. Newsom, Newsom not um, they, he signed something in for twenty dollar minimum wage, but uh, a bill. But then um, everyone, and this is I, I guess I can't take the guy you know seriously, but um, anyways. So everyone was going to do $20 minimum wages per his bill, except for Panera, because it's his buddy that has the uh, the CEO of the company. So he just excluded Panera? <laughs> That's what was going around. I didn't see that. It's either the, it was said was what was said, but. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. I don't know. It's enough Panera Gate. It, yeah. it's, it's hilarious because he oh, actually has a Freudian God. slip on camera where he says that everyone, yes, everyone but Panera was basically exempt. <laughs> And then he was like, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> Everyone, including Panera. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this guy right now. Real time says bread is exempt from 21. Oh, yeah, there he away. is. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> what the hell's the difference? Everybody's got to pay workers. Like, Dude, it's crazy. This is such nonsense. How about you just leave it? Oh, man, that's crazy. It's crazy. Good thing, I, good thing I'm not a Californian anymore. <laughs> I don't keep up on these things. Only yeah. the fishing news. Only the fishing news. I know yeah. I, was an, I was an employer in California too. I mean, I had many employees and it was just like, it's nuts, man. It's a very tough place to have a small business for I mean, sure. Yeah. It's like, you can only raise prices so many times, you know, I think in between like 2020 and 2023, before we sold our company, it was like, we'd raised our prices like 13 times or something like that, just to like stay ahead of like inflation. And it was insane. It really yeah. was insane. Yeah. Yeah. Fishing just needs to stay where it is, though, you know, and get better. Honestly, the fishing is like it's probably been better than it has been in a long time. Yeah. The tuna fishing is just like who would have known that And they're back? You know, people are already getting them on big boats. Who would have known that this stuff would have stuck around so long? You know, every year everyone says, oh, I don't know if they'll be here next year. And I'm just I keep saying like now I'm, I'm walking around going they're not leaving. Like they're here. Like it's not, it's not changing. This is going to be here for a while. So hopefully you never know. I don't think it's a cycle. I think the whole thing is that they, they did this moratorium and then they put the, uh, you know, stronger restrictions on commercial guys. Commercial guys got wise to it and they caught less, but they got bigger. So the prices were actually, you know, inflated for them. And they were, you give, you give a bluefin tuna three years to grow. It's going to be 300 pounds, you know, maybe not that fast, but I mean, it's going to be 250. So they grow yeah. fast. Like it's not, it's not a slow growing fish. So I think they're here to stay. And, and now, now I hear they're getting, they're trying to get people to actually um, tag them and like track them. Cause they want to find out if they're basically, if they're using California as a breeding ground. So if they do that, oh, interesting. It, if you, if they find out this is a breeding ground, you're going to see some regulation yeah. change quickly. So that's, you don't want that. Hopefully it's hopefully the news is it's great. They're infant fish. Hopefully you know, it's just it's a top. feeding ground. It's a feeding ground. It's an it's an incubation area. You're actually doing a great job. I think so. I mean, I've seen small ones, but I haven't seen like baby babies. You know, I've seen like the footballs. Those are babies. But I mean not I guess I don't know what a newborn <laughs> looks like, fish. but yeah, the little babies, like like a 20-pounder, I think a bluefin, if I'm not mistaken, a bluefin grows like 50 pounds in its first year. Oh, really? Like yeah, okay. something insane. Maybe I so, have pulled up some babies. Yeah. <laughs> I have killed some children then. But babies are better than, you know, killing adults. Like, man, if you keep the breeding yeah. stock healthy, like, you're not going to have an issue as much as, like, if you kill all the big ones. Right. Things this is bad. the thing, too. Like, you can't really, well, I guess on the show, like, Wicked Tuna, they do, but it's like. You can't really like release a bluefin. I guess you could, but that fight yeah. is so long and hard. And then they burn I mean, up. If it was close, you just have to kind of cut it at the boat without bringing it up. And once you slam it overboard and gaff it, like it's done, you know. 
Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, everyone's doing pretty good right now, health-wise, around the country as far as fisheries. Maybe not striped bass, but that striped fit bass fishery in the in New England area is always having a headache. Yeah, it's like salmon too. I know salmon, like salmon's not doing well. Yeah, king crab, water, maybe waterways and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, we're doing good though. Cycle. Everyone's everyone's been happy. I haven't seen too many. Uh, actually, Louisiana. I guess they made there was a a change. Uh, for I, I believe it was redfish um, and maybe speckled trout. Uh, I think it went from like 25 to a different number, but that was that's a lot of speckled trout. Like, dang, I mean, can you keep? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's good. Like, people are starting to realize how much more fishing, you know, in, how much more the nation needs fishing. Like, we need to have kids involved in learning how to do something that's actually you know, uh, worth living for. No way. No, he said, if the price of rotisserie chicken oh, goes up, the end is. I thought they, so it's, so it's five bucks still, right? It's like, yeah, I think they still got the buck 50 hot dog too, right? The hot dog and the drink. They've yeah. got to be losing so much money at this point. Like, I wonder how much do they lose on that hot dog? Cause every time I go Maybe. to Costco, like they're selling hot dogs, dude. They gotta be yeah, selling those for them though, you know? Point. Yeah. You gotta feed people. So Chiprak Oos. The judge says Muto, you moved at the right time. California is now trying to tax business owners and businesses for moving out of California. Really? Yeah. Well they can kiss my ass because I already sold it and moved. <laughs> Although I do I do still own businesses in California. I've got like some properties and stuff like that, but it's a little different. You can't really sell those. Yeah, because why would they do that? Because everybody's moving. You wonder what's interesting. We'll get on to this point a little bit. Talk about PCS is that. So one of my. I don't want to say a worry, but a concern was like, man, if I moved to California, I was if I moved from California to Florida, I was like, man, are like the California guy is going to abandon me. You know what I mean? Like, what's it going to be like? Is they going to be oh, he's like a Florida guy now. And everybody was like really cool. They came up with PCS and was like asking me how Florida was and stuff. But one, a lot of people. A lot of people were like, I wish I could leave California and I wish I could move out of California. And I was really surprised to hear that. You know, this was like the sentiment that like, because I love California. I mean, I was born and raised there, lived my whole life there. California is so beautiful, has such a good fishery. And it's just like, it's just sad, you know, seeing it go that way. And it's sad seeing people having to leave to want to raise families and stuff like that. And it's really too bad. I mean, I wish I could have stayed and, you know, to stay there for life but just a little too crazy for me but just hearing so many people like being ex acceptive of the move and then being like low-key good job man i wish i could move too like that was that was a little bit surprising to me seeing how many people like kind of felt that same way you know yeah cool. i'm fishing floor i'm still fishing in california still it's not like i mean you too you know yeah. you got oh, charter yeah. this year and yeah, you're gonna be back. i still yeah. plan on fishing there i still love the fishery regardless yeah. of I love the fisherman. I love the fishery. So we got the shirts, man. There it is. It's starting to, it doesn't stick. Yeah. You got this, the whole thing cropping out the whole <laughs> logo and everything. We got the, uh, let me see here. I just don't have any good background. So that's why I had it on. There you go. Can you see it? Don't tread on. Don't tread on anglers. Got the new shirts. We launched these at PCS, so you guys want them. We got them on sale now on the website, so check it out. This was a good segue. If you don't like, if you're an angler and you don't like being told what to do and you want to keep the fishery alive, let them know how you feel. But uh, yeah, we sold a lot of those shirts too at the show, so that was pretty awesome. It's awesome. It's a great yeah, show. Really I can't wait to go back next year bigger and better. This can be awesome. Yeah, Adobo says I love California. Yeah, I mean, I was the same way, man. I mean, California is such a gem that it's just, it's, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Voting matters. Voting really matters. <laughs> you can see it. it. Makes a difference. You owe some room and board with fishing. We're in Florida. Hey, I've, I've extended. Almost everybody I met there, I said, if you guys want to come to Florida, I'm more than happy to take you out fishing. 
I've got a place to, you can stay at my house. If you guys are ever in Jacksonville or in the area, let me know. We got two boats. We got kayaks. <laughs> We're ready to go, man. We'll get you guys on some fish for sure. This is good stuff. Yep. That's what Corey King is asking too. New proposed MPI Point Loma? Question mark. I have to look into that. Somebody else was asking no. about MPAs as well. I mean, what a yeah, that would me. be they they uh they have one little space there. Um, I believe it's Cabrillo National Monument area. If I'm not mistaken, that's the name of it. Could be wrong, but it's like a little piece already there. Maybe they're trying to extend it. Crazy, man. Like what is going on over there? Leave everything alone. What in the what is what is wrong with trying to just keep it as status quo? Why do you have to keep expanding protected areas? Like what's the point? I don't get it. I don't get it. Because they hate just they hate fishermen. I mean, they don't hate fishermen. They just I don't know. They might. They they just a lot of them are like the the meat or murder people. Any you know, they want to shut down a lot of these people would have just have they want everybody to be vegans, you know, if they had it their way. It's just crazy. It's probably because there's like the otter or something down there and they're trying to help propagate them or do better or some kind of sea lion is like, you know, not doing healthy. The colony needs La Jolla got closed down like the whole that whole, you know, children's pool area is like, oh, yeah, it's literally sea, sea lion breeding yeah. around now. Like, wow, you know. What happened to humans mattering me? You know, what happened about right. hearing what human interactions were like? You know, the sea lions yeah. were fine. Dude, they were stealing fish off the hooks anyways. Like, what's the big deal? Look at that. Benji Marina, Marina with the super Marina. sticker. Ten, 10 bones, bro. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Didn't see him. What happened? Yeah. Didn't make the trek to PCS this year, Benji. It was missing you. Usually I always see you at those shows. I know you're in Arizona, too. You were another California refugee. <laughs> Jeremy, yeah, it was cool meeting you other show too. He said he got a shirt and his "Don't Tread on Anglers" flag on his truck. Hell yeah, man! Nice. Let him know. Yeah, the sea lions too. It's like they're not even they're not endangered. They're a nuisance. Is the problem? They breed so fast. They like you telling me those sea lions aren't destroying the fishery, just going into those MPAs and basically eating all the fish. Like it's crazy. There's no way protecting that many sea lions is good there for the ecological lot system. Lions. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't but they do need a, but Well, they now do the killer whales are coming in. Hopefully they're thinning the thinning the herd. Yeah, that's true. Killer whales have been messing things up over there. Dolphins, like there probably is a lot less sea lions running around out there. Yeah. That's probably not a bad thing though. Probably not a bad thing. Been a lot of white sharks, so but the other thing, like if if people really want to look at something here. Oh my god! <laughs> um, if people really want to do anything around like La Jolla and Point Loma, they need to really focus on urchins. Like urchins are just killing yeah. all these kelp yeah. forests, the man. Kelp. Yeah. Holy smokes! If anyone was trying to do anything, like you got to eradicate these purple urchins. They're just not healthy for the environment. Oh man, it's it's not yeah. and it and once, takes a lot. once the kelp goes, then you got nothing, especially you got out no there. It's like, habitat really except for yeah. rocks and you get no sea bass, very little sea bass yeah. come through. Calico. Yeah. All those, yeah. That's the environment. Sheep, sheephead. Sheephead eat the urchins though, right? Sheephead eat the urchins. So when you have an overpopulation, overabundance of urchin, it's very good for a sheephead. And you yeah. look how many sheephead have been caught the last few years. Well, I guess why they were yeah. I guess or they were trying to pump the brakes on the the sheephead catching. They probably need more sheephead to eat, but like yeah. they need to do something else, man. And and then they had um the uh if I'm not mistaken, the crown sea stars, they were they had a huge die off and that was like 90% mortality across the state because of a virus. So like oh, wow. those things ate urchins. And they ate the urchins too, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like yeah, we got we got a problem here. It's probably urchin related. I always I I've, I've been saying it since since 2014 I've seen like La Jolla go from crazy kelp to like no kelp. It was wild. Like ever since then it could and it could be a lot of things going on. You got, you know, IB that's in trouble. Like people should be focused on how to contain Tijuana sewage. Like 
that is disgusting what's happening down there. Yeah. Every time they, you get those big rains too, it just the yeah. sewage it breaks, it overflows, it spills into the water. Yeah. Like, why are you trying to close Point Loma when you have to worry about what's going across the border first? Like, like help your own human humans out before you have to worry about the animals. The animals are doing they need to do better, but you need to help them environmentally first. Like, if you're an environmentalist, why aren't you saying anything about what's happening with river or with water runoff? Like, what's going on here? And they finally started to see a lot of people posting, like NBC7, talking about all those the, the runoff happening in TJ. But like, what now? Now, what are you gonna do? Now, what's the step you're gonna take? Are you gonna close down the TJ River? Like, are you gonna do something about like the actual runoff? You know, what are you gonna do about it? Right. Nothing. You pick the little guy. You pick the fisherman every time, and it's like, okay, you're gonna yeah. piss off people more than you're gonna help them. What's the point? So, it's anyway, this is my rant. That's what said. I just sent you a video of my boy fishing on the prime time. Watch this seal bluefin fight and try to get out his bluefin on the deck. My buddy was a deckhand fighting a seal. Yeah, man. That's I got right. a bluefin chomped. I don't know if it was a shark or a sea lion, but yeah. We still kept the we still kept the Toro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, Kevin, I'll let you go, man. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you everybody, you know, for showing up at PCS. It was a super good show. They've already got the dates for 2024, 2025. So you know, we'll be back probably doing some more shows, uh, maybe even in Texas, you know, Florida. So we're just going to keep hitting it hard. Yep. What, where can we find you? What do you got to push? Any plugs, anything you got going on? Buy, buy more 10 and 15s when they come out because I keep hearing rumors that within two weeks we're going to have a, a surplus here. Less than two weeks. There we go. You're on the plane. Get your jerk, get your jigs. Let it going, yeah. So let it ride. We should be stocked up for Spotty Bowl and the rest of summer, and yeah, it should be good, guys. And um, when are you planning, Captain Adobo? Submission fishing charter this year is. Uh, we just booked the trip with the Voyager. I went over it for the show. Um, we don't have pricing yet. It's a two day trip. It's going to be um, October twenty third to the twenty fifth. We're going to go out to the sixty mile bank, um, bluefin rockfish fishing. I don't have pricing yet, but it's coming up. There's only 15 spots available, so it's a fairly small trip. And um, you will send emails out, and uh, I'll post on Instagram. You know, of course, when things come up, and um, you yeah, should give them good. give them a window like of time. When you when you release it, you should have it open at a certain time because there's people going to be lined up to want to get those tickets. Yeah, Corey King's Voyager. Yes, sir. Yep. At a sea fourth. Yep. See fourth landing. Uh, yeah, aside from that, guys, just uh, check out your local tax stores, get your jigs. Missionfishing.com. Don't tread on angler shirts. We got the new shirts in. We got stickers. And um, we're just going to hit the ground running. Another show, another PCS down. It was a great show, guys. And um, we'll see you next time, next Thursday. All right, guys. Oos. Later. Oos.